I've just returned from the nation of Kenya after a week of ministry in the city of Hama Bay. I had never been there before, but I knew that the invitation to come and minister the gospel was a door that God had opened. I knew that God had ordained me for this moment in my life and that I must obey the voice of the Spirit. I landed in the capital city of Nairobi and a great friend of mine, Bishop Reuben Chule, picked me up and we began our six-hour journey to the city of Hama Bay. Upon our arrival, a band of pastors met us there at the hotel with such great appreciation that we had come to stand with them in their city and to take back part of Hama Bay for Christ. We began the pastors' conference the following morning in a church that was situated in a slum area of the city. Poverty abounded as we walked down that muddy trail headed to the church. But hungry hearts burning to sense a touch of the presence of God awaited. With each service, the hunger grew and grew, and God began to speak directly to the leadership of the Hall of Fame Each night after the conference, we headed to the crusade ground to administer the life of the gospel to the death of that city. The first night, we felt like we were hindered because it rained most of the night, but you never know how God will use a circumstance for His glory. We arrived in the pouring rain, and to my surprise, there were several hundred people there standing under the shelter near a, a, a shelter of nearby buildings waiting to hear. How could I not preach the gospel? How could I not share what Christ had done for me? I turned to a friend of mine and I said, Hey, do you have an umbrella? I didn't realize what I had done and that what I had chose to do at that moment would affect the rest of the crusade. I stood and I began to preach in the pouring rain under an umbrella and the Spirit of God began to move. By the end of that night, about 15 souls were added to the kingdom of God. Oh, I don't want to spend the rest of eternity in hell away from God. I want to know Jesus. I want to live for him. I want you to repeat after me. Say, dear Jesus, I am a sinner. I recognize that I've sinned against you. And I repent of my sin. The next night when we arrived, I was absolutely blown away. They told me that they had never heard of an evangelist preaching in the rain before, and so they came out by the thousands to hear.
But another 50 souls came to Christ that night in the muddy ground in front of that grandstand. His lips wrapped around his body. Ripped the flesh off his body. Wrapped around his face. Ripped pieces of meat out of his face. They beat him. They beat him. Till he looked like hamburger meat or beef meat, minced meat. No bad, no kakari, no Pilate said, Isn't this man have enough? Hasn't this man have been tortured enough? But the people began to scream. Crucify him. Crucify him. Jesus struggled underneath the weight of the cross. Yes, you know what? The splinters were tearing into his flesh. His blood was everywhere. Stumble and fall. God was about to do something. He was about to pour something out greater than I'd ever seen before. The next morning we preached in the village and two demon-possessed men came to that service. As the Spirit of God so moved that morning that both men, they were compelled, they wanted to be free, they wanted to be born again. But when they came to the front to receive salvation, Satan was not going to leave without a fight. It took five of us men to hold them down while we commanded Satan to leave. It wasn't easy, folks. Demons fought and kicked to be left alone. But you have to understand something, that hell has no power over the spoken name of Jesus. After about 20 minutes of wrestling with the darkness, both of those men were loosed and they were free from the demon possession and oppression. We headed over to the crusade ground after a while, a while afterwards, and I felt God speak directly to my spirit, and he said, Stephen, your message tonight will be this, what has your God done for you? What has your God done for you? I climbed the stage after the worship was through and I began to challenge the thousands that showed up asking them what had their God done for them. What has your God done for you? Has your God provided for you? Has your God know where you're going to be tomorrow? Has your God know that you got problems? Has your God know that you got that you got diseases? Has your God know that your body is sick? Does your God know? No, me the sight you made. Does my God does? He got the sight you made. I said my God does. I want to the sight you made. His name is Jesus. He will many years. His name is Jesus. He will yes. The Bible says. Who my way of woman? That there is no other name. The only name my cello. Given under heaven. I will set you at peace. Whereby men must be saved. I know you know what it is. His name is Jesus. I don't get the yes. Do you believe in him tonight? Do you believe in him? If you don't serve Christ, you serve the devil, even if you don't know it. And then what then has your God done for you? I began to compare all that Christ had done for me to what Satan had brought my way. And when the end of the message came and I asked the people who would like to receive Christ, I could not believe my eyes. Hundreds upon hundreds raised their hands. Several ran. They ran down to the platform with tears running down their faces. I watched Muslims lift up their hands in the audience when wanting to accept Jesus Christ. The power of God was on display that night and well over 500 came into the kingdom of God. After I returned to the hotel that night, I couldn't sleep. All that I could hear ringing in my spirit was, Stephen, you must come back. You must preach the gospel in East Africa. My wife and I both know the plan that God has chosen for us. And we feel it necessary to journey to the nation of Kenya for three months. Next year as a family, and do as much ministry as possible while we're there. We will host at least five conferences and crusades in the nation of Tanzania alone. And then Uganda has opened up a door. And different cities in Kenya have opened up. Please pray for us as we head out on this new adventure. Together as a family proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ in crusades and conferences all over East Africa. 
Thank you for partnering with us. Thank you for standing with us in both prayer and finance, for we could not do it without you. God bless you.